back live here in Silicon Valley, the heart of Silicon Valley, San Jose Convention Center. This is uh, Hadoop 2013, this is SiliconAngle.com, and Wikibon.org's exclusive coverage of Hadoop World 2013. This is theCUBE, this is our flagship program. When we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. Sanjay Mathur is here. Uh, Sanjay is the co-founder and CEO of Silicon Valley Data Science, a company that we introduced you to you last week at the GE Industrial Internet when we had Ed, Ed Dumbbell on. Sanjay, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, David. Thanks, John. We love theCUBE because the, um, it allows us to sit down and talk kind of tech, like it's, a, like it's a sports talk show or video show, like Sports Center on ESPN or CNN, whatever media metaphor, and go deep and have those conversations about what's going on in the landscape. So first of all, love the company you guys put together. Thank you. Uh, one, love the fact it's got Silicon Valley in it, because um, there was Silicon Angle. But data science right now, is exploding. There's a lot of navigation and discovery challenges around companies looking for you know, use cases, best practices, how to hire, tooling. It's all early innings in here and it's all early in the game, so uh, great market. Um, so first, introduce your company to the audience out there uh, about the firm and about the team you're putting together and your mission. Sure, uh, again, thanks for having me here. Uh, our name of our company is Silicon Valley Data Science and what we're doing is bringing a, a team of engineers, data scientists, and platform experts together to solve difficult problems for data-driven companies. And whether that is identifying critical insights, whether it's creating new capabilities, whether it's frankly assisting with new product development when you're really looking to innovate, that's what we're trying to attack. Uh, my team and I have a, a deep background in both data science and engineering. We've pulled some of the best experts out of uh, Accenture, out of Walmart, uh, you know, a number of different locations to really bring a team of uh, of experts that can work well together to solve difficult problems. So, uh, you mentioned data-driven companies. My question is, are there enough data-driven companies or do you guys have to somewhat evangelize to get people uh, data-driven? Do you go in and ask people, hey, are you a data-driven company? Oh yes, I am, and they're really not, and you run away. How does that all work? How does that dynamic work? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got friends in the back <laughs> yeah. today. The, the interesting question is, everyone focuses on whether it's you know, the, the three Vs or as it's been extended, four or five Vs, whether you look at it as a big data explosion or frankly what most companies have been doing, a throwing away data explosion, everyone's data driven. Everyone could be using their data for better analytics and better decision making. I've been doing data for 20 years and it's not surprising to me the transformation we're going through because it's been building for a long time. So some companies may not realize they're data driven but it's really a question of how do you want to drive your business forward and if you don't use data today, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah, Dave and I always talk about this. We've mentioned on theCUBE, now going on three years, we believe, and we've said, this is the first time in the history of business, in the history of, of, of enterprising, that you can actually instrument the business end-to-end -end yeah. completely. Yep. Not just supply chain, not just everything. With mobile computers, you have full instrumentation, and you know, ultimately surveillance, as we learned from the NSA. You know, it's a slippery slope. There's positives and negatives. So, how do you talk to a business owner? Because business value is a big conversation here. Yep. And of course, that's always the high ground. Business value drives prices, drives economics, drives wealth creation, solutions, et cetera. But you got to walk in saying, hello, Mr. Customer, whether it's business line manager, CIO, or CEO, look at the way you've been doing business has been great, but now there's a better way because of the data and your value chains that you have and the value activities are going to be reconstructed and either be omnidirectional, different, or, or just changed. How do you have that coverage? Do you kind of slowly go in there and ingratiate yourself in there? Do you hit them over the head with a hammer? What do, you, what do you do? Well, I think fundamentally it's two things. One, you got to have familiarity with today's tools and technologies and techniques and know how to apply them. And if you don't know how to apply them, then you can't actually have a legitimate conversation with your customer. The second side of it is understanding the domain the customer's operating in. Even if you don't know their products and services specifically, you understand what's going on. Uh, your previous guest was talking about healthcare. It's a very difficult market to sell into, but we all know that they have massive big data problems. So if you're going to go talk to a health insurer who reprices their insurance once a year, what's the big data conversation you're having with them? You're having a giant optimization discussion with them on all the data that they have, and what you said, you've instrumented everything, how do I react to that? 
So our approach is to go in and have that discussion so about- So with domain expertise is critical. Domain expertise is critical, but it's also technology domain expertise, yeah. right? <laughs> if you're entering in with the CIO or the CTO, I understand your technology problems and I now understand we have an how to move it forward. So it's one, one domino hits the other. Now it's an education problem because where have you had the intersection between healthcare and, for example, domain expertise in healthcare, the industry, yep. and now the technologists used to have a siloed IT department with HIPAA regulations. I mean, that's just one example of many. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know that's one of the reasons we brought Ed Dumble onto our team is he's fantastic at education. We realize that for us to be successful with our customers, we're going to have to educate them about that path to being a data-driven organization. But our focus is delivering the capability to them. You know, you engage with us. Our focus is we go solve the problem and show you how to be data-driven, and then teach you how to do it. So which huge is an skills part. gap. You guys are helping solve that problem, and then you're teaching the, 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 the customers how to fish, so to speak. Yeah, and then sort of. You know, moving, moving on, Sam Palmasano said, no matter what business you're in, you're going to get commoditized. Yep. Oh, yes. So, you, this, I know there's tons, as Sanjay, this is sort of a crazy question, silly question in a way, because there's so much opportunity now, but where do you see that all going? I mean, essentially, you're going to be teaching these companies to be data-driven, transferring your knowledge. You know, yep. you've been in the services business sure. for a long time, uh, so you know that trend that I'm talking about. Um, where do you see this going? You're, wh where you are today, what's your vision in terms of the types of services that you're going to be providing in the future? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. So, we are going to teach our customers how to do what they're doing better, especially if we knew it and they didn't, which is part of why you would engage with someone like us. But over the long term, what we need to do is continue to stay ahead of them on technology. Our investment in our people will be around understanding technologies, how they're evolving, and how we continue to apply them back to our customers. Our customers will come back to us and say, all right, you helped us out, this was great. What's the next thing that you can do to, to move us forward? The other side of that is really thinking about how you use data. And as much as we think that companies are data driven, back to the, the question you asked me at the beginning, most aren't. And back to my original point, we got to help them become data driven and then there's a journey that they're going to go through to make that happen. It will take time. It's not going to happen in one year or two years. I think for a company that hasn't fundamentally used its data, they're on a 10 year journey to become data driven. S um, consulting firms like your former employer, you know the big guys, who yeah. they, they tend to have very deep industry expertise. Sure. Um, they've always had their hands in technology, a lot of great technology expertise, but you know, generally speaking they haven't you know, productized it. They've, they've used bodies to yeah to um, you know, deliver. How is that changing? And, and how is Silicon Valley data science going to capitalize on that? You obviously don't have the, the global presence sure. and you've got some, certainly some industry expertise but not nearly as deep as some of those large guys. So how is that business changing and how are you guys going to capitalize on that? You know, I, I, the, the point I tease out of that is how do you deliver the skills to the marketplace? And I think the bigger you get, the more you have to take people and make them a little bit more interchangeable so that you can attack your customers all over the world and uh, maintain that relationship that you have. We're actually taking the opposite view, which is, hey, we're small, we know that. Let's get teams of experts that work very well together and keep them together. Because when you get engineers and data scientists to work well, that's kind of an aha moment. That takes some doing, and if you talk to the experts out in the field, if you look at uh, you know, what LinkedIn has done, you frankly look at what Google has done, they've gotten these teams that work ter terrifically well together, and they go solve multiple problems. If you're inside a product company or you know, one of the clients that we're pursuing, at some point you get bored of solving that problem over and over again. Our attraction and what people are coming to us for is, let me work really well in a great team and go from problem to problem and solve them uh, from domain to domain. I think you know, the large SIs, they could probably do the same thing, but once you've gone public, then you know, you've, got a, you've got a different overlord that's driving you. Well, I, <laughs> and they're still going to tend to more brute force it than yeah. it sounds like what you guys are doing. Um, talk a little bit about the typical engagement with you. So who's, you get a call or somebody calls you in, what, who are you talking to? What are they asking you? Where are they at in the whole maturity model? Yeah, there, we've, we've been uh, approached by all kinds of people. So I'll, I'll break them into two broad categories. There is people from an architecture or infrastructure level that are overwhelmed with data. And they've probably made a choice and said, okay, Hadoop's a little bit cheaper, I should look at it. Maybe they've done some experimentation, maybe they've done a, you know, a little bit of a pilot, but they're not sure how to make that work. So that's the CIO or CTO led conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a data problem as technology infrastructure. The flip side is the, let's call it the chief marketing officer or COO or CFO led uh, discussion on, we know we need to use our data better. We've been throwing out data, we got to do better marketing, you know, our competitors doing X, Y, Z, how do we make it happen? 
So we enter from one of those two domains. It's a fundamental technology problem or you've got a business imperative that you're trying to solve and we try to match the two then. Because one doesn't get solved without the other. Yeah, yeah. and so are you seeing a, 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 an, an excitement amongst those two constituencies to work together? Is there a culture clash, a combination of the, the two? <laughs> all of, all <laughs> of the above, <laughs> right? And I think you know, some of the customers we've talked to are looking for someone to come in that can bridge the gap between both sides. So if you can communicate with both sides, provide skills on both sides, and actually go solve the problem, they're much more excited to engage with you. Talk about your team. Talk about the Silicon Valley data science mm -hmm. team. Obviously, um, no one can really just jump in and be a leader here. It's very difficult. You mentioned Accenture. You're talking about the old kind of, I call them the big six accounting firms that ended up running and deploying a lot of the old school client server days, which actually transformed a lot of the, the workflows that we know and we see in automation now. But now though, that's, we're completely rebooting that model. Yep. So there's delivery, there's expertise. How are you structuring your team and talk about the team? The team itself, you know, we're, we're just getting going. We, we launched in April. We're uh, getting close to 10 people at this point. We're balancing between uh, data scientists and engineers. And as I said, we're, we're pulling people out that have really deep expertise in the field building these solutions. Whether solving large scale data problems, whether driving real time analytics to make operational decisions. We're getting people from those backgrounds and uh, having expertise in delivering those. Are solutions. you looking just Silicon Valley? Obviously, hiring is tough. Obviously, in this area, to find a data scientist is challenging. But yeah. like, obviously, other other geographies, global. Are you guys looking at remote workforces? How we, you, uh, you know, most of us come <laughs> from a heritage of dealing with collaborative teams. So, absolutely, I, you know, Skype, Skype, <laughs> Skype. <laughs> Go to meetings. <laughs> <with Skype. laughs> you, know, yeah. you guys, Silicon, we, Silicon Angle, angles. you're we, bringing news yeah. about what's relevant in the Silicon Valley yeah. for us. Having Silicon Valley in the name was about bringing the style of work, agile product delivery, delivery iterative uh, progression towards a goal, and bringing in the tools and techniques and data management expertise from the Valley out to companies And it's in else. the innovation edge too, Silicon Valley has that cutting edge, so Absolutely. that's obviously well known. Bringing that to kind of Main Street America. Yeah. Or business. Absolutely, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll call out the guys at Hortonworks just because I think they're a great example on this front. By putting a distribution on Windows, they're going and attacking a very large part of the market yeah. that has not moved off Windows. So be it, they, you know, they made a great choice with Microsoft. Yeah. Likewise, when it comes to Hadoop, I think many organizations have not yet even scratched at it. Well Sanjay, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. I want to thank Ed Dunbill for um, um, teeing us up together to come on. We really love, we'd love to have you on again now that uh, you're in the Bay Area. I'm in Palo Alto, days in Boston area. So love to continue the conversation. We are looking for signal in this area. This is an area that has a high demand, certainly from a you know, use case and demand in the marketplace. So we're looking forward to, to future conversations. Silicon Valley Data Science. This is the new consultancy, the new tooling that will be coming on. Data-driven businesses is the future. It's here and will continue to grow very, very early. Congratulations on your business Thank model. You. Really like where it's going. This is theCUBE. We are Data Driven and we'll be right back with a couple more interviews. We have two more segments and then wrap up for Dave and I. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Silicon Angle and uh, Wikibon after the short break. <laughs>